when you look at this diagram, it's kind of hard to see why would I even use MongoDB? If I get all this great stuff with SQL, I can do these joins, all this great stuff. What's the point of using MongoDB? And most of the time, yeah, there is no point. You shouldn't be using it. But in those cases, when you truly just have documents, MongoDB will shine. It is fast, it's easy to use, and its aggregations are crazy. MongoDB is bad. This is a very common refrain these days in the kind of software engineering communities I run in, and I've seen a lot of people just saying, never use MongoDB, it's bad, just stay away from it. But it's not necessarily true because there's a very small, very specific use case that MongoDB has, and most people don't actually have that use case, at least not initially. If you're just trying to build a normal app that needs to manage users, manage products, do basic, you know, SaaS stuff, you really shouldn't be using MongoDB, and I'm going to go over why in this video, but it does have a place, and kind of today I want to show you what that place is. So, to start off, I just started with the typical blog post, pros and cons. If you look up, should I use MongoDB, this is the kind of stuff you're going to get. It's got really good performance, it's really easy to use because it's literally just JSON, it is has amazing aggregations which I'll talk more about later. The documentation is phenomenal. Atlas has done a really great job of documenting all of their main drivers. I use the Go driver in my projects and it's really, really good. The integration with BSON and the queries and all that stuff is phenomenal and I highly recommend taking a look at it if you have a use case that makes sense for documents. Atlas is phenomenal to use, it's really easy, it's really fast, it scales automatically, albeit it's a bit pricey, and it is probably the easiest way I've ever put a database into production, other than maybe Planet Scale, but they're pretty similar products. And then finally, there's built-in data sharding, which just means that it's going to scale really well. You don't have to worry about scaling or managing any of that stuff, it'll just work. But granted, these days, if you need to scale and you want to use relational, just use Planet Scale and they'll do the same thing for you. It's not really a consideration. Now, when we get into the cons, this is the reason why everyone says don't use it, and it's just the joins. The joins are the crux of the issue, and they're the reason why MongoDB is the wrong choice for almost every use case. Unless you have very shallow relations, you shouldn't be using MongoDB because you're going to need to do joins on your data. You're going to need to join a user to their post, and then if you have to do that via just IDs and multiple queries, it's going to get horrible fast, and you're going to footgun yourself into oblivion. Um, then the other issues, these are less major, but they are still annoying. Duplicates, this is something I've dealt with a lot with our um, product. Dealing with just no duplicate catching and no real IDs or anything like that, it sucks. It's annoying. It's really a pain in the ass to have to go and take everything out and make sure that we don't end up putting the same thing in twice when the only way to check is to just see if they're the same or if put your own custom ID in. It's not great. Then you have to index everything. Performance is amazing, obviously. It runs faster than SQL in a lot of instances, but that is contingent on you having good indexes. If you don't have indexes, MongoDB is going to be extremely slow, it's going to chug, and your Atlas bill is going to go through the roof. It's not fun, I can tell you from experience. And then finally, there's no real schema. Um, there is and there kind of can be, but it's nothing compared to SQL where there is a rigid schema that you have to follow or it's just not going to work. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to actually visualize the difference between a document database and a relational database, which I don't think a lot of people actually understand. I see a ton of people just talking about like, oh, why would you not use MongoDB? It's really performant. The MERN stack is really popular. You see it in basic tutorials and all that stuff. And for a to-do app, yeah, it's great. MongoDB is going to feel great when you're doing that, but as soon as you start needing to add uh, as soon as you get to the point where you need to add Stripe, you need to add Auth, you need to add Posts, you need to add Comments, you need to do all this crap, it's going to get a lot less fun really, really fast. So this shows a really good example of that. So I just created a Users and Posts, two different tables. This is an extremely basic thing that you know any social media app would have. In a document-based database, you're going to have all these documents in this collection, and then when you do a query, you're going to spit out one document here. So you're going to get, say, we just queried a document, we got out this user. Then in the post section, we're going to have the same thing. You query it, and you just get out this post. There is no way to do a query which will fetch from both of these at the same time. You could do, like, a complex query where you, like, do this them at the same time or whatever, but you can't just implicitly join them the way you can in SQL, because in SQL you have primary keys and foreign keys, which are actually part of the database itself and part of the database query language. 
So when you do a query in here, if we want to get a user, we can automatically get all of that user's posts by doing a join. So the SQL query would be like, get users join posts on ID. I don't know it off the top of my head. I just use Prisma. Um, but, you know, so this will end up spinning out this giant user object with the posts nested in here. So what's really nice about this is if I wanted to actually get all of the posts in Mongo, I'd have to, okay, so I'll fetch my user, and then I'm going to do another query where I'm going to take, okay, I have my user ID now. Now I need to do all of the posts which have a user ID that matches my user or whatever, which is really, really not fun to deal with. And then if you get into a second layer of nesting, imagine you added comments to this. Suddenly you have to do, okay, do that whole query on users, then that whole thing on posts, then that whole thing on comments, and then how do you do, like, if the comment needs to reference into a user, then you have to go back up three levels, or A. The whole thing gets really bad really, really fast. So you should never use this for your users. You should never use this for your basic data logic, your business logic. I would always recommend going with a SQL solution. This is 50 plus years old. It is time honored and tested. It will work. And this is the reason why everyone says MongoDB is bad. Stay away from it. But there is a reason to use it. If you look at how this works and how these are actual documents, well, just if you have a solution that needs documents, use MongoDB. I've got a couple different things for actually explaining aggregations and really trying to show why they're good. And I think really the only way to do it is with an example. I can tell you all day that, yeah, it's a really easy way to group your data, get maxes, mins, sums, all this great stuff. But it works better if I actually show you. So right here, I drew out what's actually happening in the example I'm going to show you. And this is from the real production code that InsiderViz is using. So it's a real world example. What this function is going to do is it's going to get the 10 companies with the highest buy volume over a certain period of time. So this is done via a MongoDB aggregation and it is really, really performant, which is great because if we didn't have these MongoDB aggregations, this would be pretty slow because we'd have to do this over hundreds of thousands of documents, custom ourselves, and it would not be good. So the first thing I can show you is this right here. So this is a visualization of what we're doing. The first thing we do is we match the documents. So we first want to say, okay, I'm going to pick out these documents that match this filter. Back in the code here, we're matching that the date is uh, after the start date and that the form class is correct so that we're getting uh, regular insider stuff. So we want to make sure that these two match so then the only documents which will then be passed into the projection stage will match these filters. Next, we go into the projection stage. So what this is doing in here is this will then narrow down the exact fields we want. So instead of just passing in every single field, there's like half a dozen, no, like probably 20-something fields on these, I think. We don't want to pass all those in because that's going to send back a giant payload. So we just want to pass in exactly what we need. So in this projection stage, all I'm going to pass in is I'm going to pass in the date. I'm going to pass in the issuer, which is going to have the CIK and all that stuff, which is how we actually group them by company. And then finally, I have this function that I'm defining, which is sum buys. So what this is doing is this is doing a conditional sum on whether or not the buy or sell field is set to buy. So if it is set to that, I'm going to pass in the net total. If it's not, I'm going to pass in zero. So this is the kind of really cool thing you can do is pass in these conditionals and do these um, sums across these fields. So if you imagine what I'd have to do in code, I'd have to pull down all these documents, I'd have to go through each document, and then I'd have to make this if statement on each one, and this is going to run very slow because I'm going to have to do a database query across all of those, versus MongoDB will just do this in-house for me really, really fast. So after the projection, we then pass these into the grouping stage, and this is kind of where the magic happens. So inside the group, I'm defining this underscore ID field. This is what it's grouping by. So it's going to group them by the issuer CIK. So it's going to create a document in there that is has these fields on it. It's going to have ID is issuer CIK. So then I'm going to have amount, which is going to be the sum of the result of sum buys. And this sum buys function, which I declared up here, is then going to be called on every single issuer uh, or every single document that matches this criteria that has this CIK, and they're going to all be added together at the end. So it'll sum over all of them, and it'll get the right net total at the end. Then finally, I'm just taking the name and ticker, and that's just calling first on the first one that passes in, because they're all the same. It doesn't matter, matter which one I take. So once I've done that, then it's basically ready. These last two things are just nice little extra things I can do. Finally, I'm going to order them, so I want to sort them by the amount, because we're getting the 10 largest, so I need to uh, sort them to sending. And then finally, I'm going to limit them to only 10, because I don't want to send back 
thousands of companies. I just want to send back 10. So we do that, we get all this information, and then finally we can just run this via our database and then call it on the Delta form collection, get them all back. And if you go to our site, you can actually see this right here. These two things right here, this is the result of that call. So we're getting this data by doing that call and by doing these aggregations, it makes it really, really quick and really, really easy. Obviously this loaded instantly because we're just using Next.js's static. So we build this every 20 minutes when we get new data, but it runs in about a second. So it takes about a second to run all of that across several hundred thousand documents, which is phenomenal. So that's kind of an example of the aggregation pipeline actually being used. The next thing I want to talk about is full text search. So if you go to our site and you type in Apple or APL, so um, Apple's ticker, you're going to end up getting Apple at the top. And the way, what's actually happening under the hood is we are using MongoDB's full text um, search provided via Atlas. So we're using Atlas's full text search, which is indexed over everything for us. And I don't even know how it works under the hood. All we have to do is we just have to tell it which collection and what fields we want to index over and then pass in the thing and it will just give us the right um, input out or it'll give us the right output. So this makes implementing full text, text search an absolute breeze, which is something that can be quite a pain to deal with. Um, now, obviously, SQL does have this as well, but the way MongoDB does it and Atlas does it is great.